Hey, no ones and welcome to Metatron's Academy. We are continuing a very fun series of videos. So uh, today we're looking at an interesting variety of, of Spanish and it's the Puerto Rican Spanish. So the Spanish spoken, of course, in Puerto Rico. We want to see how different it is, for example, from other varieties of Spanish, whether it be Spain Spanish, but also Argentina, Mexico, all of that good stuff. So uh, let's get started. I'm going to watch probably a couple of videos here and then I'm going to react to it. Let's go. The Puerto Rican Spanish dialect. Español Boricua. Numbers. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. Right, so uh, the first thing that I noticed is that numbers are already so revealing when it comes to Spanish and accents, isn't it? Uh, because one thing that I'm noticing, of course, by the way he says cinco with an S sound as opposed to the way they, sp they pronounce it in Spain. Cinco, then, but as I was expecting, to be honest, was going to, when it comes to Spanish and the New World, uh, generally speaking, I think they all have this characteristic, but uh, also they are, I like saying dropping their S's, but I've been corrected and I've been told that it's not that they don't pronounce the S, but it's that they have a, somewhat of a little bit of a glottal stop, perhaps. Regardless, they don't fully pronounce the S's at the end, which is something that I'm noticing in common with Chilean Spanish. So far, so good. Let's continue. Greetings. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Buenos días. Buenas tardes. Buenas noches. Hasta luego. Nos vemos. De nada. No hay de qué. So yes, the um, yeah, it sounds like it's a very fast-paced and uh, not entirely enunciated variety, which, for example, compared to Argentinian Spanish, makes it a little harder for me to understand. Although then again, if you're a native of Spanish, but you speak a different variety, uh, could you understand everything? No problem. I would expect so. But for me, as someone who doesn't really speak Spanish and uh, but does come from a Romance language perspective, it being Italian, um, then yes, this kind of lack of enunciation or full complete pronunciation of every single syllable makes it a little difficult because my language Italian, we tend to enunciate every syllable, which is something I believe we have in common with Brazilian Portuguese, uh, which is also why, once again, Portugal Portuguese tends to be a little harder for me to understand. As we are noticing, not only they don't fully pronounce the S at the end of words, they also seem to do the same with S's in the middle. Gracias. Por favor. Adiós. Words and phrases. Traje. Now, I noticed in this recording, once again, maybe it doesn't represent every speaker, but in the way he said, por favor, it didn't sound like an R. I didn't hear a trilling of R at the end, it almost sounded like an L. But maybe it's just a recording. Let's see if that happens again, or if it was just a little mistake, maybe, in the recording. Biscocho. Estoy en fogo, no? Ay, bendito. Ave Maria. Al garete. So this is the first time now that I'm hearing the way he said Ave Maria. He said like Ave Maria, something like that. Sorry if I didn't do it right. What I'm trying to say is that there is a, a very distinct intonation to it that I find charming. I think it sounds nice, but it might also be distinctive. So it might be something that could be characteristic, a characteristic of this. If you are, once again, a, a speaker of Spanish, would everything you heard so far give it away? Or is it not that distinctive? Let me know. Also, I'm having trouble understanding some of these words. Chavo. Bembe. Chévere. Habla morita. Okay, so this is interesting. I didn't understand any of these words, but as I am looking at the versions in Spain Spanish, dress in Spain Spanish seems to be vestido. I would have recognized that because in Italian it's vestito. But traje? unrecognizable to me. Interesting, the one for cake, because in Spain Spanish seems to be pastel or pastel, and then it becomes be bizocho or bisocho biscocho biscocho that is so interesting like, yeah it's, i think he said biscocho so they are both recognizable from an italian perspective but then again i don't think he pronounced the z he probably said biscocho or something like that i'll have to go listen to it again but they both sound like italian words pastel kind of sounds like pastello which is a type of color like colored pencils whereas biscocho sounds like biscotto a little bit uh, but I don't know if it's close enough, that just means biscuit in Italian. Coins is a moneda in, Ita in uh, Spain Spanish, which is moneta in Italian, and they s seem to use chavos, which, or chavos, which would not be uh, recognizable for me. So, so far, the specific vocabulary makes it actually harder for me to understand as an Italian. Very interesting. Let's, let's go to a different video and let's listen to actual natives 
use it and speak. Let's see how much I can understand. Hey, que la que hay, mi gente. It's Rocky here from SpeakSpanishFaster.com and I have a special... My first impression is, seems like the hardest accent so far of all the accents that I've tried, but let's see. Salúdale. Bueno, mi gente, espero que estén bien. Un saludo directamente de Puerto Rico, Florida, Puerto Rico. Mi nombre es Kevin. Yeah, when he said un saludo directamente de Puerto Rico, I understood that. So uh, there still seemed to be a little bit of mutual intelligibility uh, coming from an Italian perspective. He clearly has an accent, but it doesn't seem to bother me. I think I, if I do find some problems, it might be more with the, with the vocabulary, but we'll see. ¿Cuánto, cuánto tiempo tú tienes en Puerto Rico? Bueno, actualmente tengo eh, como algunos 14 años desde que me moví de, de Estados Unidos hacia Puerto Rico, eso que llevo prácticamente 14 años ahora mismo. Sí, ¿cuándo, ¿cuándo fue cuando tú mudaste aquí por la primera vez? Cuando yo te conocí, aunque tú eres mi primo, yo te conocí cuando yo tenía como 14 años. Pues por... viví, viví 14 años en Puerto Rico, estuve como 6 años en Estados Unidos. I do understand the, like the guy on the right, and I'm having problems understanding or following the guy on the left. But he did say that the guy on the left is coming straight from Puerto Rico. I, I, of course, I, I don't understand the accent, I'm not familiar with the accent enough to, to be able to tell, but to me, it seems like the guy on the right has, even though he might have an accent, it's definitely lighter for whatever reason, but the guy on, on the left in, in, instead seems to be speaking much more naturally, which makes it harder for me to follow. Luego volví a Puerto Rico y ya actualmente llevo ya como 14 años aproximadamente. Tienes una esposa, tiene hijo. Tengo una esposa, una mujer hermosa y preciosa que ha estado conmigo en las buenas y en las malas, en todo momento, y tengo... Good for you. <laughs> I understood that one. Ha estado conmigo en las buenas y en las malas, en todo momento, y tengo, gracias a Dios, tengo dos hijos. Y de trabajo que tú haces. So, at the very end, he's, of course, he's talking about the wife, in good and in, and in bad, okay. okay, I can understand that. But then, I misunderstood what he has, but retrospectively, as I'm trying to understand it, I'm like, he probably said he has two sons, two children, which would be tengo dos hijos, I believe. I can't do it, but I think that's what happened. So maybe if I listen to it enough, I might be able to notice that. Pues tengo mi propio negocio, eh, tengo mi, mi, mi tienda en Barceloneta, Puerto Rico, tengo mi tienda online y actualmente trabajo en una farmacéutica. Sí, también él está trabajando conmigo aquí en este video y quizás si, si va bien, entonces quizás él puede trabajar conmigo más. So, en verdad... Yeah, yeah, again, the guy on the right, he said, you're working with me on this video and who knows if it goes well, you, we might do it again. I think that's what he's saying or more. I understand the guy on the right, the guy on the left is a little harder to follow along, but like, for example, he said something about living for 14 years in Puerto Rico. I don't think so, because he's from Puerto Rico, so what does he mean in... in, in a... I have no idea. Okay, so interesting. Let's see one last video and then we'll call it a day. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to do something totally fun, totally different than what I've done here on my channel before. My family is from Puerto Rico. I thought that this would be fun to do to teach you guys some terms and some words that I grew up with. So the first word that I have is acho or chacho. So you'll probably hear a lot of Puerto Ricans saying something like Acho nene, pero tu jode más que el diablo. Acho. So it literally means like, damn, you would say it anytime. Acho. I didn't know that. So the second word is one that I hear a lot and my mom still says it. And I've never heard it said like in another culture. So like if you are from a different background and you say some of these words, please let me know because I find it so interesting. But the next word is abombao. So abombao literally means spoiled, no good. Wow, never heard of Yes, we are two words out of two. No idea what they mean. So, so far, I think what I'm getting from this is that a lot of the typical vocabulary that is associated normally with Puerto Rican Spanish would be particularly difficult for me to understand because that seems to be where the, where the difficulty is. They have a lot of their own ways of saying stuff. They, they make it a little harder. You gotta throw it out. My mom would be like, Mira, nena, tú tienes que tirar eso para afuera porque esa comida está abombao. Abombao. Oh. The food as well. Let's do one more is something that you've probably heard quite often and probably something that we say the most. And if you heard Despacito, which is like the biggest song, there's a line that says, Hasta que las olas griten, ay bendito. 
Ay bendito is something that we use to say aw. So, ay bendito, mira que linda esa nena. Or, ay bendito, te cogieron de pendejo. <laughs> so, ay bendito can be used just to say aw. Like, if you are just expressing affection or admiration for some Oh, I see. A-W-W. -W. I was still trying to understand what the heck that meant. Okay. Well, no, it, I mean, my fault, not her fault. She's doing a good job. So, okay, so that's, uh, that's interesting. That's what that means. Yeah, no, definitely. I, I double down. It's a difficult version of Spanish to learn or to understand, should I say. To learn, I don't know. We'll have to see the, how the grammar is affected, perhaps on a dedicated video. But so far, my first impression and and my first experience with, with this variety of Spanish is that it sounds interesting, it sounds charming, but it, it was also quite difficult for me to pick up or even understand what they're on about sometimes. Although then again, with the other guys speaking, occasionally I could still understand because of the magic of Romance languages. We're all cousins, aren't we? Okay, so uh, if you want to keep watching this video, I don't want to kind of spoil the whole video, but you'll find, of course, links in the description below. This was my experience with Puerto Rican Spanish. Very interesting. And I want to see if I can find more videos, perhaps for a second episode. Thank you so much. And let me know what other language or variety of a language we already covered you'd like me to uh, talk about in the next video. Thank you for joining Metarons Academy.